I'm Del Walters live in Atlanta. You're watching Scripps News tonight. America's Steel Magnolia honored today at a memorial service in Atlanta. Rosalind Carter dying on November 19th. She was 96 years young. She was remembered as a humanitarian activist and yes, former first lady. President Biden joining Dr. Jill Biden, the first lady and four other former first ladies today. Melania Trump, Michelle Obama, Laura Bush and Hillary Clinton all there. A memorable quote came from her grandson who says she told him you can do anything for 20 minutes, but hold your breath. He was worried, he said, about giving speeches. Others said she redefined the office of First Lady. My mother was the glue that held our family together through the ups and downs and thicks and thins of our family's politics. I will always love my mother. I will cherish how she and dad raised her children that given us such a great example of how a couple should relate. Let me finish by saying that my mother, Rosalind Carter, was the most beautiful woman I've ever met and pretty to look at too. Wife, mother, business manager, political strategist, diplomat, advocate, author. Yet what I remember most about her was her tireless dedication to taking care of others. Without Rosalind Carter, I don't believe there would have been a President Carter. She and the two of you set an example for all of us. I agree with my friend Jim Fallows, who wrote, her memory will be a blessing. Her influence on the world will be her monument, end quote. Because of Rosalind Carter, millions of lives are better off. What a gift she left. One of my last memories of her was in a hospital. We were there for my grandfather, but she had her own physical limitations that made it hard for her to walk. She had to practice. She was ready to go for one of these walks and she picked up this cane. And I looked at the cane. She looked at me and she said, you know, it's not a cane. And I said, she said, it's a trekking pole. I watched her walk down that hall, that trekking pole. And I followed her, and I just pray that we never lose sight of that path. Goodbye, darling. Until tomorrow, Jimmy. There were tears, there was laughter, and yes, stories that we will remember for the rest of our lives. Andrew Oak knew her well and had a front row seat to history. Andrew, thanks for being back. He is the author of the book, First Lady's Man. Um, Andrew, there were luminaries in the room, but it was her children and grandchildren who actually wound up bringing the crowd to tears. Del, this was about as well done and orchestrated a public ceremony, event, memorial that I've ever seen. I mean, for Mr. Carter to be there, 99 years old, 10 months in hospice care, that's fortitude, that's love. He said recently, that he was worried after her dementia diagnosis that he wouldn't be around long enough to see her through to this next journey in, 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 in death and, and moving on. And he stuck it out. 
The two of them were true partners right to the end. President Carter now has done his final job of what he saw was helping her in that dementia with that medical condition pass on. And we saw the tributes. This is about as open a window, as wide a window, as big a window into the Carter's personal life and family life as we're going to get. We really got to know a side of Mrs. Carter, who's a first lady who we know pretty well. These are accessible people. These are people who walked among the people, worked among the people, a Habitat for Humanity, all the different charities and philanthropies that we talk about. Plains, Georgia, you could see them walking down the street at any given time. The Carter Center, they would be there going out in Atlanta. But we got this additional look inside the family and got those personal stories from her son, Chip, the reading from Amy, and then the grandson, Jason, really made them even more of a real person, Mrs. Carter. And I didn't think that was possible. It was truly remarkable. I had to laugh when Jason said to uh, to Dr. Joe Biden saying, thanks for bringing your husband with you. Uh, I got a kind of a bit of laughter, but correct me if I'm wrong. Did the Carters put everyone else in the room to shame? Because this is supposed to be a country as Washington laid it out, where you come, you serve in Washington, and then you go back home. They did just that. And not only did they do just that, you're right. They frequently went to church. My sister actually showed up at the church service, went, you know, went in because the church doors were always open. And it seemed like they relished the fact that they were normal people. And that's the way it was always supposed to be. Very much so. And that's why this tribute all across Georgia is so important. You see, all walks of life, young, old, school children, because they had this long life, 77 years married together, uh, the longest and most productive uh, uh, post-productive, uh, post-White House uh, 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 career of, of nearly any president and first lady. They've, they've, it's not that they put everyone to shame, but boy, they've set the bar pretty high and, and a standard of what you can do when you walk the walk and talk the talk. This is a powerful couple and powerful not in a sense of 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 ruling or 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 any type of uh, uh aggression or 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 uh, uh distasteful way they went about it humbly without seeking the the recognition and leading by example and you saw all of those examples laid out especially mrs carter's uh, uh lifelong assistant right. uh catherine cade you know was listing her professional achievements i mean even beyond what i knew about her and i knew a lot about her before we going into this ceremony i mean you're looking what they did for people what they did for disease in foreign countries in the continent of africa with the different worms and the different uh, 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 diseases that were killing millions of people that she are down to now climbed seven. every mountain with the yes. exception of Mount Everest. And she was at base camp there. Um, I want, to, want you to tell me about the fact that all of the living former first ladies were there. How monumental is it? We talk about the, the, the presidents who get together. How monumental was it to have them together in one room? That is incredible. And I really, you know, you don't see much of Melania Trump these days. You haven't seen much of her since the Trumps left the White House. And when it was announced that she was coming, I was very surprised. Um, she was lined right up there. Melania Trump, Michelle Obama, Laura Bush, Hillary Clinton, and then Dr. Jill Biden right there. Uh, you don't see that often. It's typically at a museum opening or at some kind of funeral. The last time we saw this many first ladies together was when Mrs. Reagan died uh, uh, and then Mrs. Right. Bush after her in the past, you know, 10 years. That's that's probably the most they've gotten together for something like this. And to have that type of of leadership and those it's a unique sorority of women. You know, you really hear about this, how you don't know what it's like unless you're in that role. And you can only study and read so much and you can only understand so much about. But it's truly a role in supporting one of the most powerful men in the world that only those women understand. And to have them all in that room, in that in, in that union of support for Mrs. Carter, a woman who set the role and set the bar so high and changed the role of First Lady as she did is quite remarkable. Andrew, for the millennials and the Gen Zers, it needs to be pointed out that her tenure as First Lady came during what could only be described as a revolution in women's rights. Uh, there was Billie Jean King taking on Bobby Riggs in the Battle of the Sexes. Uh, Virginia Slim Cigarette came out for, for women to have their own cigarette. Uh, I remember the, the, uh, the phrase said, I can bring home the bacon and fry it up in a pan. America changed when she was there. 
and yet she had an equal partnership, it seemed, with the President of the United States. How big of a role was that partnership for Americans at that time? Well, it was huge, Dell. She was doing this to get him elected as governor. And then as governor, she did it to get him elected as president. She headed up those campaign efforts, those grassroots. It was called the Peanut Brigade, and it was campaigned and headquarters right out of Plains, Georgia, a train station that's right there in the center of town. And when he won the presidency, largely in part to her efforts and that grassroots effort that she did champion and lead, she walked right into every cabinet meeting, every advisory meeting, every council meeting, and she said, she openly said, I can't have an intelligent conversation with Jimmy about the issues and 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 problems and and solutions of the day if I'm not in on the meetings and don't understand anything everything at the highest level. And and she didn't take no for an answer. She walked into those meetings very confidently, very proudly, took notes, consulted with the president and was truly his closest advisor and confidant right up until they let her Did you day. know before today that she was the one that suggested to Menachem Begin and Anwar Sadat that they meet at Camp David? I, I did. She had led a lot of those efforts. And, you know, in that sense, first ladies soften the blow. They're, they're political without being political. They're not elected. They're not paid. There's no job description. If they can take on this friendly yeah, but we're talking about we're talking about leaders in parts of the world that were completely different. If we talk about the revolution going on in this country, think about the revolution that was going on both in Israel and also in Egypt. Well, and it's still going on today. And again, someone that they call that role, they mentioned uh, uh, today how she was how she had learned Spanish before going to uh, a Spanish speaking country to walk in so she could talk to those leaders in their language and let them know that she understood the issues of the day. She was well studied, learned on all the issues. And when she went in with that confidence, knowing what she did with the background, she could talk to those leaders at that level and get instant respect. Let me tell you, I have seen a lot of these, too. I agree with you. That was the most touching memorial I think I have ever seen for a head of state, dating back almost to the death of President Kennedy. Um, the author of First Lady's Man, Andrew Oak. Andrew, as always, thanks for being with us tonight. Thanks for having me, Dell. You got it. Ms. Carter, by the way, will be laid to rest in her hometown of Plains, Georgia. That will take place on Wednesday. We will be right back.